Since I've started doing these stories on the lowering lake levels at Lake Mead, a term that I heard a lot was dead pool. Lake Mead is vanishing before our eyes. The last time the lake was at full pool, it was 1983. Now, it's in a countdown to dead pool. For the first time in history, a glimpse of what's to come. Shifting shorelines, relocation of marinas, water cutbacks, and a blow to hydropower, the new normal of America's West. Deadpool. No water, no power, no food. The way things are going right now, this may be the end game for Lake Mead. Now, many people consider the lake an essential part of the existence of Las Vegas. But what they don't know is what happens when the water level drops to its most critical level in the legendary reservoir's history. Recently, the media focus has been on what happens to the lake when it becomes a dead pool. How will life change for those in Nevada, California, Arizona? Why is it that at the end of the day, none of these questions actually really even matter for the city of Las Vegas? This video is an eye-opening look at the whys involved in the water crisis at Lake Mead. Why is it that while Arizona might run dry, crops and livestock will most certainly die in California, and parts of northern Mexico will become a barren wasteland, Las Vegas will most certainly still survive. This is a story of how Las Vegas and Southern Nevada went all in, bet big, and ultimately broke the system. A story filled with big bets on nearly $1 billion projects to save the Las Vegas area, engineering marvels, billion-year-old rocks, and even death in the process so that so many could even live. The story of how Vegas gambled on the one bet it couldn't afford to lose. The bet for all the water in Lake Mead. Everything you think you know about the Hoover Dam in Lake Mead, it's most certainly wrong. What we think we know, we know because of what the news media tells us that we know. But as always, there's so much more to the story. A giant reservoir slowly draining, rapidly depleting due to a prolonged mega drought, evaporating before our very eyes due to excessively hot summers. Throw in a dose of climate change and you have the current narrative. This is Lake Mead as we know it, largely because they tell us that's the way it is. But the truth, the reasons why the dam was created, well that turns out to be far more complex. You see, it turns out that the dam wasn't just created to store water. If anything, there was too much water in the 1920s during its construction. When they built the Hoover Dam, areas in the southwest were prone to flooding, and the dam would control that water. Right, so too much water. Who would have imagined that, huh? The Hoover Dam solved another problem too. California was booming, so building a massive hydroelectric plant made sense. So at the most fundamental level, Hoover Dam was largely created to service the Golden State's water and energy demands. Building a giant dam gave the government an opportunity to generate power. A lot of it. Hoover Dam in Nevada is still one of the largest hydroelectric power plants in the entire country. But that doesn't mean Hoover Dam's power has anything to do with Las Vegas. Whenever the water does run out, slot machines will still be spinning on the strip. The largest source of electricity in Nevada actually comes from natural gas-powered plants. The water in Lake Mead isn't exactly an afterthought, though. The lake itself, when full, can hold 9.3 trillion gallons of water. And that water is used extensively throughout the Las Vegas Valley. What's really frightening, though, is how much Las Vegas actually relies on Lake Mead and how the relationship between the lake, the residents of Las Vegas, and the rest of the American Southwest are in a parasitic relationship, somewhat like an addict and drug dealer, reliant on each other to stay alive until the very last drop. 895 feet. That's the magic number when Lake Mead becomes a dead pool and everything changes. The water stops flowing through the Hoover Dam. Crops all across California and Mexico are forced to wither so the lives of humans can be spared. And rolling brownouts occur due to a lack of power being generated at the Hoover Dam's power plant. Sounds pretty scary, but then why is it that officials in Southern Nevada seem less concerned than anyone else? 489 million gallons. That's how much water the city of Las Vegas uses daily. To put it into perspective, that's 489 million empty one-gallon milk bottles laid end-to-end -end that would cross the United States of America from coast to coast 27 times. 90% of the water that keeps Vegas from being a Mad Max dystopian hellscape comes from Lake Mead. 10% from the naturally occurring springs that run below the city. Onlookers like to criticize the massive water features on the Las Vegas Strip, but unbeknownst to almost everyone, properties like the Bellagio and the Wynn have their massive water features sitting on old water leases. They 
tap into natural wells and use less water than the golf courses that once littered the strip in the vintage Vegas days of past. We'll talk more about some of these iconic strip properties in a future video, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for that right now. All told, the strip and its hotels, tourists, and water features use just 3% of all the water in the city annually. Still, just because it's the closest in proximity to the lake, Las Vegas certainly is not the largest consumer of water from Lake Mead at all. You may even be shocked to learn the exact opposite happens to be true. The largest user of water from the lake is actually California, 1.4 trillion gallons annually. Vegas itself only uses a fraction of that, only 78.9 billion gallons per year. But of course, Lake Mead wouldn't exist without the Hoover Dam itself, and the giant hydroelectric plant hidden inside is also currently suffering from drought conditions. Again, if you thought Vegas was reliant on the Hoover Dam for power, you'd be surprised to learn that close to 95% of all the power generated at Hoover Dam goes everywhere else but Nevada. So now that we know where the water and electricity go, we need to know how it actually gets there. Vegas is in no real danger of running dry, but the real story here is how Vegas managed to outsmart everybody else in the race for the water. The tale of how Vegas went all in, in a typical Vegas fashion, and put everything on the line to prevent the city from running dry, creating a workaround to protect the city and state, is a fascinating one for sure. The sneaky plan to essentially steal every last drop of Lake Mead in case of emergency is sinisterly simplistic. But in the grand scheme of things, if the water stops flowing everywhere else, if Vegas holds all the proverbial cards, will having all the water even really matter? In the current media landscape, using shock tactics for clicks and views has become the norm. It's human psychology. We become intrigued with the fear that we might be harmed or miss critical information that could affect our lives. We click to read. We share the potential danger with others. It's no doubt then that attaching the term Deadpool to Lake Mead has likely been a huge payday for news websites in 2022. But what exactly is a Deadpool? While the dictionary definition is simple to understand, the ramifications are potentially deadly. A giant reservoir like a dam holds back water at times and allows water to pass through at others. It accomplishes this by intake valves that sit in the lake, and in the case of Lake Mead, there are several. So long as the water level is above the intakes, water will be allowed to pass through the dam when needed, and in the case of Hoover Dam, water that passes through hits electrical turbines that generate electricity. A dead pool occurs when the water level drops below these intake valves, and the water all of it simply stops flowing through the dam and onto its next destination. Places like Phoenix, San Diego, the Imperial Valley, and parts of the Los Angeles metropolitan area. The destinations are farmland to grow food, hospitals to treat the injured and save lives, and water treatment facilities to make the water safe to drink. Forget about your lawn or garden going brown. This is more serious business than you can imagine. This is life or death for millions, as the powers that be are forced to decide if they grow food or keep people alive. So when does a Deadpool happen at Lake Mead? The experts have pegged it at 895 feet. It's at this level that the intake valves run dry, the water stops flowing, and the electricity is cut to everyone that relies on Lake Mead and the Hoover Dam for survival. Everyone that is, except for Las Vegas. And this is what is most intriguing of all. Imagine yourself, manager of the Southern Nevada Water Authority in the year 2002. As you stand staring out at the vast dark blue waters of Lake Mead, you know something is amiss. The last two years have been rough, drier than normal to be sure, and there are rumors from climate experts that this drought might not be ending anytime soon. You know that if these drought conditions persist, it's just a matter of time before the original intake valve designed to pump water into the city of Las Vegas itself all those years ago, back in 1971, that'll become exposed. It'll create a real problem for not just the millions of tourists on the glowing neon strip, but the millions more that live in the Las Vegas Valley and Clark County year-round. Little did you know, the plan to save Las Vegas would pose one of the biggest engineering challenges in modern history. Cost nearly a billion dollars, and even cost a life. It was under these conditions that the setup for the biggest heist in the history of Las Vegas was set. The city of Las Vegas depends on Lake Mead in very special ways. And while the water from Lake Mead that makes its way to Arizona and California must pass through the Hoover Dam, the intakes that feed Las Vegas are different, special. Around about this time, back in the early 2000s, a new intake was in order. One that would sit well below the Deadpool elevation of 895 feet. A low-level intake that provided a tap that you, quote, turn on and don't think about, according to one of the pipeline managers. And if the water dropped to a level where Hoover Dam stopped pumping it, if a Deadpool ever were to occur, well, Vegas would still get its water, sucked from Lake Mead and delivered across a three-mile, 24-foot wide pipe encased in thousands of pounds of concrete, located 55 stories below the lake's surface. Everyone else? Well, that's an entirely different story that we'll address in a little bit. One of the most expensive and challenging projects of its kind ever attempted. 
all to keep the residents and tourists of Las Vegas hydrated. If this sounds straightforward, it wasn't. Intense planning started in 2002, construction began in 2009, and tragically, death followed shortly thereafter. In 2012, Thomas Turner was over 600 feet underground, deep in the tunnel, when he was hit with pressurized grout when a tunnel segment was knocked loose. Two workers were hit, fatally wounding Thomas. A tragic reminder that try as we might, will never fully tame Mother Nature. After officials certified that the project was safe to resume, work progressed. Enough concrete to build 500 homes in Las Vegas was used. Tunnels were slowly drilled 600 feet under the ground without the use of modern technology like GPS systems to guide them along their way. A $25 million, 1,500 ton drilling rig the size of two football fields was constructed. Gravel, boulders, and pre-Cambrian era rock, as old as 4 billion years old, was slowly removed as a new intake tunnel took shape. And in 2015, after thousands of hours of manual labor, thousands of tons of rock removed, and even the loss of life, Las Vegas had managed to secure the future, to move around the dreaded Deadpool problem and guarantee its water, even if Hoover Dam and Lake Mead ever hit the Deadpool status. That was no longer a concern for the city, but what about California, Arizona, and the surrounding states? Suddenly it would seem that in the future what happens outside of Vegas might just be part of what goes on to kill Vegas. We are taking a closer look at the climate crisis and the dangerous drought at Lake Mead in Nevada. The South faces a severe weather threat. Meanwhile, red flag fire warnings have been posted in several western states. And now we're going to turn to the unprecedented water crisis in California, which could also impact the food supply. This is not a drought anymore. It's aridification. The lack of snow and rain to feed the Colorado River and fill Lake Mead has been the norm every year for over 20 years now. Assuming these things remain unchanged and a dead pool happens, what becomes the fate of the areas that rely on Hoover Dam itself to get their water and electricity? When this happens, California is the biggest loser, specifically Southern California, the Imperial Valley, and San Diego regions. The Imperial Valley, just east of San Diego, is home to much of the cattle, lettuce, wheat, broccoli, and other fresh produce that we, as a continent, have come to enjoy year-round in our grocery stores. In the case of Deadpool, severe cuts would need to be made to balance the needs of water with people, animals, and crops. When the water stops, there simply are no more farms. This is according to a quote by the Imperial Irrigation District's J.B. Hamby. To put it bluntly, prices for meat and produce are bad now. Try buying a head of lettuce after the $263 million of lettuce grown here is wilted out of existence. Good luck with buying ground beef when the $287 million cattle industry here has been eradicated. Scarcity, higher food prices, less money to vacation with. Shifting water from the farmland into the urban areas of San Diego will be the only way for the region's population to properly survive. But it isn't just the San Diego area 3.3 million people that will need to make do. Everyone in the state will be affected in one way or another. Nearly 25% of all the water from Orange County to Los Angeles comes in some way, shape, or form from Lake Mead. Without water, everything increases in price. People lose jobs to offset expenses of running farms and manufacturing. And with brownouts from lack of power provided by Hoover Dam, will it be long before electricity rates go up in the Golden State? So how does this pose a threat to Las Vegas? In 2021, close to 30% of visitors to Vegas were from California. The real question is, is, will things get so bad in California that it affects tourism in Nevada? Or will we see a mass exodus of people leaving their homes to come to the one place where water isn't an issue? Vegas has grown to beastly levels in recent years. The COVID shutdown was a temporary bump on an accelerating upward curve of new stadiums, new resorts, and massive renovations all over the Strip. Is there a butterfly effect from a Deadpool in Lake Mead? Or do all these tourists simply come in and become residents? Possibly an even bigger shift in those moving from California to Las Vegas may happen. After all, we'll have all the water and electricity, right? Ultimately, it has to be asked, how long can the current growth rate in Las Vegas last? How long until we're having the exact same conversation about water levels simply omitting California next time from the dialogue. So think about this today when you brush your teeth and let the water simply run down the drain. Although you might get annoyed by the extreme environmentalist types nagging you about overwatering your lawn, this is certainly a dire time for this precious resource in the American Southwest. And just remember what songstress Joni Mitchell once said, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Hopefully they won't be tearing down California and putting up a parking lot for Las Vegas anytime soon. I thank you for watching, liking, and sharing this video. If you're here for the first time, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos just like it. As a matter of fact, I'll put some up on the screen for you to click on in just a few seconds. My name is Steven. Once again, I am not leaving Las Vegas. And thank you so much for watching, and have a great day out there.